Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about position vectors in terms of their parametric equations that they're dependent on. So, let's say we have a particle that moves along this green line right here, and let's say that at different points in time, that particle is going to be at different positions. And so we have our position vectors when t equals 1, when t equals 2, when t equals 3. Well, because ultimately the parametric variable will be t. But how we write that is slightly different. First of all, we write the position vector in terms of an x component in the i direction plus a y component in the j direction. But those x and y components are therefore then written in terms of their parametric variable. So that x is a function of t and y is another function of t. And x, the function of t is equal to t squared. And the other function of t, g of t, is equal to 3t. So then when we replace x and y by the function of t and the other function of t, and then the first function of t is t squared, the second function of t is 3t. So now we have a position vector expressed in terms of its parametric variable. Now all we have to do is to figure out where that particle is. We just plug in different values for t, and we'll get different values for this expression. Let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, when t is equal to 0, we get the position vector. So we say r of t is equal, oh, I already wrote that, so I don't have to write it again, okay, I'm already ahead of myself, so we write, that's equal to 0 squared in the i direction, plus 3 times 0 in the j direction, so that's simply 0i plus 0j, or the 0 vector, in other words, it is at the origin at time equals 0. Now when time equals 1, again, I'm assuming that our parametric variable represents time. So now we plug in 1 here, so we get 1 squared in the i direction plus 3 times 1 in the j direction, so that's going to be 1i plus 3j. So when time is equal to 1, our, our, our particle will now be at that particular location. When time equals 2, we get 2 squared in the i direction plus 3 times 2 in the j direction, which is 4i plus 6j. So now you can see at time equals 2, our particle's in this position. And one second later, we can say that this will be 3 squared in the i position, or in the i direction, 3 times 3 in the j direction, which is equal to 9i plus 9j. And you can see now our particle is over there. One thing that I don't like, and I think that's sometimes confusing, is when they write things like this. I much rather would have seen that the position vector when t equals 1, and the position vector when t equals 2, and the position vector when t equals 3, because then clearly it shows what the parametric variable is. When all you see is just a number in there, you don't always know exactly what the parametric ve vector is, and you have to go look um, a variable is, and you have to go look for it in the text somewhere. So it's always much better when they just simply write it like this: the position vector when the parametric variable equals one, the position vector when the parametric variable equals two, and the position vector when the parametric variable equals three. So here are the position vectors evaluated for various values of the parametric variable. Of course, the result is a vector quantity, which then shows the position of the object you're following, the particle you're following, for those various values for the parametric variable. In this case, we can assume that that represents time. And so notice, position vectors simply allow you to figure out where the particle's at, depending upon the value of the parametric variable. Could be time, could be angle, could be something else, but there it is. That's how it's done, and that's how we use position vectors with the parametric equations. So in this case, the parametric equations that then depend upon the parametric variable. That's how it's done.